Unit 1 The Haridomar Model Asterisk Structure 1.0 Objectives 1.1 Introduction 1.2 Features of Modern Economic Growth 1.3 Underlying Ideas 1.4 Assumptions of the Model 1.5 Haridomar Equation 1.6 Knife Edge Problem 1.7 Limitations of Haridomar Model 1.8 Let us sum up 1.9 Answers slash Hints to Check Your Progress Exercises 1.0 Objectives after reading this unit, you will be able to state the necessity of sustained economic growth. Outline the implications of the assumptions made in the Herod-Domar model. Determine how steady-state growth can be achieved in an economy with fixed saving rate and capital output ratio. Determine the conditions under which a steady growth rate can be maintained. Distinguish between warranted growth rate and actual growth rate. Discuss the instability problem of the Herod-Domar model and identify the limitations of the Herod-Domar model. 1.1 Introduction Of all the issues facing development economists, none is as compelling as the question of economic growth. A country's ability to provide improving standards of living for its people depends crucially on its long-run rate of economic growth. Over a long period of time, even an apparently small difference in the rate of economic growth can translate into a large difference in the income of the average person. Ever since the end of Second World War, interest in the problems of economic growth has led economists to formulate growth models of different types. Asterisk Dr. Archibadia, Associate Professor, Department of Economics and Public Policy, Central University of Himachal Pradesh, Dharamshala. 6. Economic growth A feature common to them all is that they are based on the Keynesian Saving Investment Analysis. The Herod-Domar model is the first and the simplest model of economic growth. You may recall that the Keynesian analysis was for the short run. If we extend it to the long run, we find that capital stock of a country increases as investment is more than the replacement investment or the depreciation level. Increase in capital stock leads to increase in production capacity of an economy. As production capacity increases, there is economic growth of the country. Thus, the Herod-Domar model is a direct outcome of the projection of the short-run Keynesian analysis into the long run. 1.2 Features of Modern Economic Growth Throughout most of human history, appreciable growth in per capita gross domestic product, GDP, was the exception rather than the rule. Let us consider the growth rates of the world's leading economies over the past four centuries. During the period 1580 to 1820, the Netherlands was a leading industrial country. It experienced an average annual growth in real GDP per worker hour of roughly 0.2%. Average annual growth rate of the United States of America during the period 1890 to 1989 was a relatively dramatic 2.2% per year. Although an annual growth rate of 2% in per capita GDP does not appear very impressive, a moment's reflection and calculation reveals its enormous potential if such growth rate is sustained. Simple calculations show that at the 2% rate, a country's per capita GDP doubles in 35 years, a length of time considerably shorter than the lifespan of an individual. Robert Lucas, in his Marshall Lectures at the University of Cambridge in 1984-85, prior to the acceleration in economic growth rate of India, when per capita income was growing at less than 1.5% per annum, stated, Rates of growth of real per capita income are diverse, even over sustained periods. Indian incomes will double every 50 years, Korean every 10 years. An Indian will, on average, be twice as well off as his grandfather, a Korean 32 times. 
A sustained economic growth in the last century was not experienced the world over. In the 19th and 20th centuries, only a handful of countries, mostly in Western Europe and North America, could manage to take off into sustained growth, to use a well-known term coined by the economic historian W. W. Rostow. Throughout most of what is commonly known as the Third World, the growth experience only began well into the 20th century, for many of them, probably not until the post-World War II era, when colonialism ended. The now-developed countries, such as the U.S., Canada, Australia, etc., grew in an environment uninhabited by countries of far greater economic strength. Today, the story is completely different. 7. The developing countries not only need to grow, they must grow at rates that far the Herod Domar model exceed historical experience. The developed world already exists, and their access to economic resources is far higher than that of the developing countries. Exponential growth at rates of 2% per annum may well have significant long-run effects, but they cannot match the parallel growth of human aspirations and the increased perception of global inequalities. 1.3 Underlying Ideas The Herod-Domar model was developed independently by Roy F. Herod in 1939 and F. C. Domar in 1946. Although Herod and Domar models differ in details, they are bracketed together because of their similarity of approach. Both these models emphasize the essential conditions of achieving and maintaining steady growth, i.e., occurring in a smooth, gradual, and regular manner. Herod and Domar assign a crucial role to capital accumulation in the process of growth. In fact, they emphasize the dual role of investment, viz. i. it generates income through the multiplier effect, and 2. it leads to capital accumulation and increase in productive capacity. Economic growth is the result of abstention from current consumption. An economy produces a variety of commodities. The act of production generates income. The very same income is used to buy these commodities. Commodity production creates income, which creates demand for those very same commodities. We broadly classify commodities into two groups, viz. I. Consumption goods, which are produced for the purpose of satisfying human wants and preferences, and 2. Capital goods, which are produced for the purpose of producing other commodities. Mangoes Fountain pen, clothes, etc. are examples of consumption goods. A blast furnace, a conveyor belt, equipment, etc. come under the category of capital goods. As you know from the circular flows of income and expenditure, the income generated from the production of all goods is spent on both consumer goods and capital goods. Typically, households buy consumer goods, whereas firms buy capital goods to expand their production or to replace worn-out machinery. All income is not spent on current consumption. By abstaining from consumption, households make available a pool of funds that firms use to buy capital goods. This is the act of investment. Note, however, that without the initial availability of saving it would not be possible to invest and there would be no expansion. This is the simple starting point of the theory of economic growth. Implicit in this story is the idea of macroeconomic balance. If you think of a circuit diagram with income flowing out of firms as they produce and income flowing back into firms as they sell, you can visualize saving as a leakage from the system. The demand for consumption goods alone falls short of the income that created this demand. Investors fill this gap by stepping in with their demand for capital goods. 8. Economic Growth macroeconomic balance is achieved when this investment demand is at a level that exactly counterbalances the saving leakage. 
This concept is summarized in Figure 1.1, which depicts the circuit diagram. Check your progress 1.1. Describe the importance of sustained economic growth. 2. Explain the circuit diagram. Figure 1.1, the circuit diagram, production, consumption, saving, and investment firms' investment. Households. Wages, profits, rents. Inflow. Outflow. Consumption expenditure. Inflow. Saving. Figure 1.1 shows income flowing out of the firms as they produce and income flowing back into the firms as they sell. Saving is the leakage from the system. Balance is reached when investment exactly counterbalances the saving leakage. 9. The Herod Domar Model 1.4 Assumptions of the Model The main assumptions of the Herod Domar Model are as follows. 1. The economy is operating under full employment. It implies that there is no idle production capacity. 2. There is no government interference in the functioning of the economy. 3. The model is based on the assumption of closed economy. In other words, government restrictions on trade and the complications caused by international trade are ruled out. 4. There are no lags in adjustment of variables, that is, economic variables such as saving, investment, income, expenditure, etc. adjust themselves completely within the same period. 5. The average propensity to save, APS, and marginal propensity to save, MPS, are equal to each other, i.e., APS equals MPS. In symbols, slash equals slash equals. Households save a fixed proportion of their income every year. 6. The capital output ratio, theta, which is defined as the units of capital required to increase output by one unit is constant. Thus, slash equals slash equals theta. This amounts to assuming that the law of constant returns to scale operates in the economy because of the fixity of the capital output ratio. 7. Income, investment, and saving are all defined in the net sense, that is, they are considered over and above the depreciation. Thus, depreciation rates are not included in these variables. 8. The general price level is assumed to be constant, i.e., money income and real income are the same. 9. There are no changes in the interest rate. 10. There is fixed proportion of capital, K, and labor, L, in the production process. These assumptions are meant to simplify the task of growth analysis. These could be relaxed later. 1.5 Herod Domar Equation Economic growth is positive when investment exceeds the amount necessary to replace depreciated capital, thereby allowing the next period cycle to recur on a larger scale. We adopt the following notations. Y denotes total output, C denotes total consumption, and S denotes total saving. Remember that these variables are aggregates over the population. Thus the following equation shall be true as a matter of accounting. Equals plus for all time periods. 1.1 10 Economic growth in other words, national income is divided between consumption and saving. The other side of the coin is that the value of produced output, also equal to y, should be equal to the sum of consumption goods and capital goods. Thus, equals plus 1.2, where I denotes investment. If we equate equations 1.1 and 1.2, we obtain the famous macroeconomic balance equation, that is, saving equals investment. 
in notations equals 1.3. As we have mentioned earlier, investment augments the national capital stock, K. Thus, equals plus 1.4. Equation 1.4 means that capital stock in period T equals the sum of capital stock. In the previous period, minus 1, and the investment made in period T, we can write equation 1.4 as equals minus 1.4a. By combining equations 1.3 and 1.4a, we obtain equals minus 1.5. As defined earlier, saving rate equals slash. Therefore, equals or simply, if. We assume saving ratio to be constant over time. Similarly, equals theta and equals theta for all time periods with theta as the capital output ratio. Using these in 1.5, we get equals theta minus theta equals theta minus 1.6. By rearranging terms in equation 1.6, we obtain equals 1.7 or equals equals 1.8. Where is the required or warranted growth rate in national income? Equation 1.8 is the famous Herod Delmar equation. According to this equation, for maintaining equilibrium in the economy, the ratio of S saving income ratio to theta capital output ratio should be equal to the growth rate equals in income or output of the economy. The warranted growth rate refers to that growth rate of the economy when it is operating at full capacity. It can be interpreted as the growth rate required for full utilization of a growing stock of capital so that entrepreneurs would be satisfied with the amount of investment actually made. The Herod Delmar equation given at 1.8 links the growth rate of the economy to two fundamental. 11. The Herrick Domar model variables, the ability of the economy to save, and the capital output ratio. By pushing up the rate of saving, it would be possible to accelerate the rate of growth. Likewise, by increasing the rate at which capital produces output, a Lower value of theta, growth can be enhanced. You may note that central planning in countries such as India and erstwhile Soviet Union during the pre-liberalization period was deeply influenced by the Herod Domar equation. If an economy has to grow steadily without any disturbances, then the two ratios, namely, Saving rate and capital output ratio have to be constant over time. That is equals 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 s and equals 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 theta. If such constancy holds, then the economy will grow steadily at the required rate of growth, which is equal to a small amendment to the Herod Domar model allows us to incorporate the effects of population growth. It should be clear that as the equation 1.8 currently stands, it is a statement regarding the rate of growth of gross national product, GNP, not GNP per capita. To talk about per capita growth, we should Net out the effects of population growth. This is easy enough to do. If population P 
growth rate is n, we have equals equals 1 minus 1.9. From equation 1.9, we find that equals 1 minus 1.10. Let equals slash denote per capita income. From equation 1.6, we have theta equals theta plus. Let us divide both sides by. Thus we have slash equals slash plus slash 1.11 theta equals asterisk operator plus 1.12. Recall that we denote as per capita income while as total income of the country. Theta equals asterisk operator plus 1.13. Theta minus theta asterisk operator equals 1.14. Theta minus asterisk operator equals 1.15. Let's just divide both sides of equation 1.15 by 12. Economic growth 1 minus asterisk operator equals 1.16. Asterisk operator equals 1 minus 1.17. Let us define equals asterisk operator where asterisk operator is the per capita growth rate. This can be Arranged to show that 1 minus equals asterisk operator or equals 1 minus asterisk operator. In equation 1.10, we have shown that equals 1 minus where is the population? Growth rate. If we substitute these two expressions, n in equation 1.17, we obtain 1 minus asterisk operator, 1 minus, equals 1 minus, 1.18. We expand equation 1.18 and see that 1 minus asterisk operator minus plus asterisk operator equals 1 minus. Asterisk operator plus minus asterisk operator equals since both asterisk operator and our small numbers, such as 0.05 or 0.02, their product is very small relative to the other terms and can be ignored as an approximation. This gives us the approximate equation. Equals asterisk operator plus 1.19. This is an expression that combines some of the fundamental features underlying growth, viz. the ability to save and invest, captured by S, the ability to convert capital into output, which depends inversely on theta, and the rate of population growth. Check your progress too. 1. State the equation for the warranted growth rate. 2. Under what conditions can an economy grow steadily without any disturbances? 13. The Herod-Domar Model 3. How does the Herod-Domar equation change when the effect of population growth rate is incorporated? 1.6 Knife Edge Problem. Let us now discuss the issue, how to achieve steady growth. According to Herod, the economy can achieve steady growth if and only if the expected growth rate, let us denote it by, equals the warranted growth rate. What if the expectation is for some rate of growth other than? As you know from equation 1.8 equals. We assume that capital output ratio is constant and is equal to for every period. Equals equals equals. Equals or equals y or equals y. 1.20. We know that. Equals k minus k. Substituting the value of from equation 1.20 in the above gives us. Equals y minus y. 1.21. 
Since y, output in current time period is known only after the period is over, before that it is just an estimate or expected value, is not known, the economic agents make an expectation about it. Investment in period T will therefore depend upon C units 4 and 5 of BCC 106 equals Y minus Y 1.22. Investment in period T depends on difference between expected demand in period T and actual demand in period minus 1. If Y, Y, 0, Y, Y, 0. From the Keynesian model, we know that equals plus 1.23. In 1.23, aggregate demand is the sum of consumption and investment demand as there is no government sector and foreign trade by assumption. A fixed fraction of income is consumed since we assume S to be constant in the model. 14. Economic growth equals 1.24. Substituting from equation 1.24 in equation 1.23, we get equals plus 1.25 equals 1.26 equals 1.27. Where is the investment multiplier with which income Y will go up when? Investment demand, I, increases by one unit. If we divide both sides of equation 1.27 by Y, we get equals 1.28. Substituting for from equation 1.22 in equation 1.28, we obtain equals 1.29 Since equals the expected growth rate, we have equals 1.30 Since is the warranted growth rate, we have equals 1.31 an implication of 1.31 is that the expected growth rate will be equal to the warranted growth rate if and only if the expected output y is equal to the actual output. It means that steady growth is possible only if the expected output y is equal to the actual output. In symbols, equals equals if and only if y equals. Since expectations to be correct is a matter of pure chance, according to Herod. Domar model, realization of steady growth is uncertain. Let us look again into the actual growth rate. Equals equals 1 minus 1.32 our objective is to find a relationship between N so that both the rates can be compared. Equals equals 1 minus or equals 1 minus 1.33. By rearranging terms in 1.33, we find that equals 1 minus Y 1.34. Let us look back at equation 1.31. 15. The Herod Domar model we have equals, which we can rearrange as equals y or equals slash y. This gives us equals y 1.35. Now we have values of from equation 1.34 and value of from equation 1.35. Let us substitute these values in equation 1.32. We find that equals 1 minus 1.36. Thus, equals 1 minus asterisk operator 1.37 
When the actual growth rate is equal to expected growth rate, i.e. equals, we have from equation 1.37 equals 1 minus asterisk operator or 1 minus equals asterisk operator or 1 minus equals 1 minus asterisk operator. Hence, equals 1.38. It is clear that actual growth rate equals the warranted growth rate required for steady growth of the economy if and only if the actual growth rate is equal to the expected growth rate. That is, equals equals equals. Actual growth rate equals expected growth rate equals warranted growth rate equals. We already know from previous discussion that expected growth rate will equal if and only if the expectations are correct, that is y equals. According to the Herod-Domar model, there will be instability in an economy if actual growth rate deviates from the expected growth rate. If actual growth rate will be higher than expected growth rate. On the other hand, if the actual growth rate will be lower than expected growth rate. This in fact is the beginning of the Herod's instability problem. The steady state growth of the economy requires equality between equals equals equals. In a free enterprise economy, these equilibrium conditions would be satisfied only rarely, if at all. Therefore, Herod analyzed the situations when these conditions are not satisfied. If investors anticipate more than the warranted rate of growth, then actual growth rate will exceed even the high expected growth rate. 16. Economic growth, in other words, if exceeds equals, then the actual growth rate will turn out to be even greater than the already high expected growth rate. Investors would then get a wrong signal. Instead of feeling that they expected too much and slowing down their investment, investors will feel that they expected too little since. So in the next period, they will invest more. Thus the gap between the actual growth rate and the warranted growth rate will keep widening in each period, see figure 1.2. The economy will experience inflation. There will be insufficient goods in the pipeline or insufficient equipment. Such a situation will lead to secular inflation because actual income grows at a faster rate than the one allowed by the growth in the productive capacity of the economy. In other words, the following inequality holds equals. On the other hand, if investors anticipate a growth rate lower than the warranted growth, i.e., then actual growth rate will be even lower than the expected growth rate. In other words, the investors will now feel that they expected too much as the actual growth rate turns out to be lower than the expected growth rate. So in the next period, they will invest even lesser thereby further widening the gap between actual and warranted growth rates, see figure 1.3. Such a situation will lead to secular depression because actual income. Time equals rate of growth warranted growth rate figure 1.2 shows that when exceeds equals then actual growth rate will turn out to be even greater than the already high expected growth rate. Investors would then get a wrong signal. Such a situation will lead to secular inflation because actual income grows at a faster rate than allowed by the growth in the productive capacity of the economy. The following inequality holds equals. Figure 1.2, Interaction Between Actual, Expected, and Warranted Growth Rates 17. The Herod-Domar model grows much slower than what is required for full utilization of the productive capacity of the economy. This is the crux of Herod's problem. 
A slight deviation of actual growth rate from warranted growth rate leads the economy drift farther away from the steady-state growth path. It is hence called knife-edge equilibrium. Figure 1.2 and Fig. 1.3 show the interaction between actual, expected, and warranted growth rates. An illustration. Let us understand the Herod's instability problem through an example. For an economy, let the saving rate be 20%, S equals 0.2, the capital output ratio equals increment increment equals 2. Hence the warranted growth rate will be equals equals 10% equals 0.1. Suppose the previous period's output is given as equals 90. The economy can attain steady state equilibrium when the actual output growth rate equals expected output growth rate, which in turn equals the warranted growth rate of 10 percenter. Thus, for steady state growth, the expected output should be equal to the actual output of 100 units equals equals 100. If the above holds, then equals 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 10%. In this case, equals equals 10%. Here, investment will equal equals increment y equals 2 asterisk operator 10 is equal to 20 units. Figure 1.3, interaction between actual, expected, and warranted growth rates. Time. Equals. Rate of growth. Warranted growth rate. Figure 1.3 shows that when, then actual growth rate will be even lower than the expected growth rate. In other words, such a situation will lead to secular depression because actual income grows slowly than what is required for full utilization of the productive capacity of the economy. 18. Economic growth now this investment will create aggregate demand through the multiplier effect, which equals 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 dot asterisk operator 20 equals 100. Thus if investors expect an output of 100 units, they will invest 20 units in trying to create capacity for an additional 10 units of demand minus this investment of 20 units will generate through the multiplier of 5 yielding an aggregate demand of 100 units. In this way, expectations are realized, that is, equals 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 10%. If, however, the investors anticipate a little too much, i.e. equals 101. The additional units which are expected to be produced, minus equals 101 minus 90 equals 11 units. The investors will then invest, equals increment y equals 2 asterisk operator 11 is equal to 22 units. Now, these 22 units of investment will create an aggregate demand of, equals dot asterisk operator 22 equals 110. As can be seen from above, that is, 110 greater than 101. Let us now calculate the actual and expected growth rates. Equals 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 18.18 percent. Equals 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 10.8 percent. As can be seen now, 18.18% greater than 10.8% greater than 10%. Investors in the next period will feel that they invested too little and will further increase their investments, which in turn will further widen the gap. Let us now look into the opposite situation. Suppose the investors expect too little equals 99. The additional units which are expected to be produced, minus equals 9 units. The investors will then invest, equals increment y is equal to 2 times 9 equals 18 units. Now, these 18 units of investment will create an aggregate demand of, equals dot times 18, equals 90. 
as can be seen from above, that is, 90 less than 99. 19. The Herrick Domar model let us now calculate the actual and expected growth rates. Equals 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 zero percent. Equals 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 nine percent. As can be seen now, zero percent less than nine percent less than ten percent. Thus, investors will feel that they expected too much, and hence they will reduce investment further in the next period, thereby widening the gap between actual and warranted growth. Check your progress 3-1. Why is the equilibrium condition in the Herod-Domar model called the knife-edge equilibrium? 2. What happens to an economy when expected growth rate is higher than the warranted growth rate? 3. Specify the effect of an expected growth rate lower than the warranted growth rate. 20. Economic Growth 1.7 Limitations of Herod-Domar Model Some of the conclusions of the Herod-Domar model depend on the crucial assumptions made by Herod and Domar which make this model unrealistic. These are 1. The propensity to save, S, and the capital output ratio are assumed to be constant. In reality, they are likely to change in the long run and thus modify the requirements for steady growth. 2. The assumption that labor and capital are used in fixed proportions, due to the assumption of constant returns to scale, is untenable. Generally, labor can be substituted for capital and the economy can move smoothly towards a path of steady growth. In fact, unlike Herod's model, this path is not so unstable that the economy should experience chronic inflation or unemployment if does not coincide with. 3. The Herod-Domar model fails to consider changes in the general price level. Price changes always occur over time and may stabilize otherwise unstable situations. In fact, if allowance is made for price changes in variable proportions in production, then the system may have much stronger stability than what the Herod's model suggests. 4. The assumption that there are no changes in interest rates is irrelevant to the analysis. In fact, interest rates do change and affect investment. A reduction in interest rates during periods of overproduction can make capital-intensive processes more profitable by increasing the demand for capital, thereby making excess supplies of goods. 5. The Herod-Domar model ignores the effect of government programs on economic growth. If, for instance, the government undertakes programs of development, the Herod-Domar analysis does not provide us with causal, functional relationship. 1.8 Let U.S. Sum Up In this unit, we discussed the Herod-Domar model, which is the direct outcome of projection of the short-run Keynesian analysis into the long run. The Herod-Domar model shows the importance of saving and investing in an economy. The model was developed independently by Roy F. Herod and F. Z. Domar. According to this model, the growth of an economy is positively related to its saving ratio and negatively related to its capital output ratio. The model implies that a higher saving rate allows for more investment in physical capital. This investment can increase the production of goods and services in a country, thereby increasing growth. The capital output ratio shows how much capital is needed to produce a dollar's worth of output. It reflects the efficiency of using machines. This efficiency means that a lower capital output ratio leads to higher economic growth since fewer inputs generate higher outputs. The model held a great appeal to the developing world. It is argued that in 21. The Harris Domar model developing countries, low rates of economic growth and development are linked to low saving rates. This creates a vicious cycle of low investment, low output, and low saving.
To boost economic growth rate, it is necessary to increase saving either domestically or from abroad. Higher saving creates a virtuous circle of self-sustaining economic growth. The model suggests that there is no natural reason for an economy to have balanced economic growth. The sustained economic growth requires equality between expected growth rate, actual growth rate, and warranted growth rate. This, however, can only be a coincidence. A slight deviation of actual growth rate from the warranted growth rate will lead the economy drift farther away from the steady state growth path. The instability in the Herod Domar model is due to its rigid assumptions, such as the assumptions of a fixed production function, a fixed saving rate, and a fixed capital output ratio. Despite these limitations, the Herod Domar model is important as it makes Keynes static short run saving and investment theory a dynamic one. 1.9 answers slash hints to check your progress exercises. Check your progress 1. 1. Sustained growth has enormous potential. A sustained growth of even 2% will double GDP per capita in 35 years. 2. If you think of a circuit diagram with income flowing out of firms as they produce and income flowing back into firms as they sell, you can visualize saving as a leakage from the system. Check your progress 2. 1. It is given by the ratio of S to refer to section 1.5. 2. If the economy has to grow steadily, without any disturbances, then the two ratios, namely saving rate and capital output ratio, have to be the same over time. If the above holds, then the economy will grow steadily at a given rate of growth, which is the ratio of saving rate to capital output ratio. 3. The equation changes to equals asterisk operator plus. Check your progress 3. 1. A slight deviation of actual growth rate from warranted growth rate leads the economy drift farther away from the steady state growth path. 2. If exceeds equals then actual growth rate will turn out to be even greater than the already high expected growth rate. Investors would then get a wrong signal. Such a situation will lead to secular inflation because 22. Economic growth actual income grows at a faster rate than allowed by the growth in the productive capacity of the economy. The following inequality holds equals 3. If, then actual growth rate will be even lower than the expected growth rate. In other words, such a situation will lead to secular depression because actual income grows slowly than what is required for full utilization of the productive capacity of the economy. 23. Unit 2 The Solo Model Structure 2.0 Objectives 2.1 Introduction 2.2 Sources of Economic Growth 2.3 Assumptions of the Solo Model 2.4 Steady State Growth Path 2.4.1 Dynamics of the Model 2.4.2 Steady State Level of Capital 2.4.3 Balanced Growth Path 2.5 Golden Rule Level of Capital Accumulation 2.6 Determinants of Long Run Living Standards 2.6.1 Impact of Increase in Saving Ratio 2.6.2 Impact of Population Growth Rate 2.7 Technological Progress in the Solo Model 2.7.1 Balanced Growth Path 2.7.2 Golden Rule Level of Capital 2.8 Let us sum up 2.9 Answers Slash Hints to Check Your Progress Exercises 2.0 Objectives after going through this unit, 
you will be in a position to explain economic growth with the help of neoclassical growth model, outline the implications of the assumptions made in the Sala model, determine how steady state growth can be achieved in an economy with an exogenous population growth rate and technological progress, determine the growth of key variables such as output per worker, means per unit of labor, and capital per worker on the balanced growth path. Examine the impact of saving rate and population growth on the long-run living standards and comment on the golden rule level of capital. 2.1 Introduction The limitations of the herod domar model prompted many economists to think further. Recall from the previous unit that the warranted growth rate in the Dr. Archibadia, Associate Professor, Department of Economics and Public Policy, Central University of Himachal Pradesh, Dharamshala. 24. Economic growth Herod Domar model was given by the ratio of S, saving rate, and capital output ratio V. The razor edge problem came up because S and V are constants, so that their ratio is a constant, and there is no scope for altering this ratio. In real life, however, economies do not face such razor edge problems and policymakers do have certain flexibility. In order to make the Herod Domar model more realistic, economists proceeded on two lines. In a major contribution to economic growth theory, Robert M. Solo developed the neoclassical model of economic growth in 1957, for which he was awarded Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences in 1987. Solo has made a huge contribution to our understanding of the factors that determine the rate of economic growth for different countries. Salo extended the Herod Domar model by adding labor as a factor of production and assuming that capital output ratio is not constant. The Salo growth model shows how saving, population growth, and technological progress affect the level of an economy's output and its growth over time. It also explains why national income grows and why some economies grow faster than others. In this unit, we begin with the assumptions of the model. Subsequently, we derive the steady-state growth path. We then introduce the golden rule capital labor ratio. We also understand how the changes in the savings rate, population, and technological progress affect the output per person and capital per person in the steady state. We conclude by discussing implications of the Salo model for the economies of the world. 2.2 Sources of Economic Growth Salo considers an aggregate production function which defines the relationship between output, Y, and two inputs, viz, capital, K, and labor, L. In symbols, it is given by equals 2.1 where E denotes the level of technology. In equation 2.1, if the levels of inputs, K and L, are constant and the level of technology is the same, output will be constant, there will be no economic growth. For the level of output to grow, either the levels of inputs grow or the level of technology must improve, that means there should be technological progress or productivity growth or both. Thus growth of output has two sources, viz. I, growth in inputs, and 2, productivity growth. According to Salo, relationship between the rate of output growth, the rates of input growth, and productivity growth is increment equals increment plus increment plus increment. 2.2 2. Where increment equals rate of output growth. 25. The Salo model increment equals rate of productivity growth. Increment equals rate of capital input growth. Increment equals rate of labor input growth. Equals elasticity of output with respect to capital.
equals elasticity of output with respect to labor. Equation 2.2 is called the growth accounting equation. Growth accounting provides useful information about the sources of growth. It, however, does not completely explain a country's growth performance. Because growth accounting takes the economy's rates of input growth as given, it cannot explain why capital and labor grow at the rates they do. The growth of capital stock is the result of saving and investment decisions taken by the households and firms, while the growth of labor depends on population growth. By taking capital stock and labor as given, growth accounting presents a static picture. In the next section, we take a closer look at the dynamics of economic growth or how the growth process evolves over time. 2.3 Assumptions of the Solo Model The main assumptions of the Solo Model are as follows. I. D. The economy is operates under full employment of inputs. 2. There is no government interference in the functioning of the economy, it is a free market economy. 3. There is no external trade so that it is a closed economy. 4. The economy operates under a neoclassical production function. It exhibits constant returns to scale. For example, if all factors of production, K and L in this case, are doubled, output will be exactly doubled. In notations, equals 2.3. For any positive number Z, both capital and labor are essential for production. This production function allows us to analyze all quantities in the economy relative to the size of the labor. If we set equals in equation 2.3, we get equals 1, 2.4. The output per worker is a function of capital per worker. Let us define equals output per worker and equals capital per worker. Thus, we can write the production function given at 2.4 as equals 1, which can be reformulated as equals 2.5 26. Economic growth, the production function given as equation 2.5 is assumed to satisfy three conditions, viz. 0 equals 0. 0, 0. We interpret these conditions as follows. First, output is 0 when capital per worker is 0. Second, marginal product of capital per unit of labor is positive. Third, marginal product of capital per unit of labor increases at a decreasing rate. In other words, marginal product of capital is positive but it declines as capital per unit of labor increases. The production function given at 2.5 above is shown in Fig. 2.1, you can observe that the production function has a positive slope but it becomes flatter as the amount of capital per worker increases, indicating that it exhibits diminishing returns. When K is low, the average worker has very little capital to work with, so an extra unit of capital is very useful and produces a lot. Of additional output. When K is high, the average worker has a lot of capital. Already, so an extra unit of capital increases production only slightly. V. Growth of labor input is exogenously determined, given from outside the model, at a constant rate of N. In notations. Equals, equals. 2.6. 6, and technology, E, which we will introduce later, and G respectively. And equals and equals. Figure 2.1, Neoclassical Production Function. Capital per worker, figure 2.1 shows that the output per worker depends on capital per worker. 
The slope of the production function, marginal product of capital, is positive but becomes flatter as increases, exhibiting diminishing returns to capital per worker. Output per worker. MPK. 1 unit. Output. 27. 7. The solo model assumes that each year people save a fraction s of the solo model their income and consume a fraction 1s. The saving rate is fixed. The consumption function can be expressed as equals 1 minus 2.78. The capital stock depreciates at a constant rate delta every period. Change in capital stock between one period and the next depends on investment which raises the capital stock and depreciation which wears out the capital stock. Change in capital stock equals investment, depreciation equals minus equals 2.8. The higher the capital stock, the greater is the amount of depreciation. Check your progress 1-1. State the properties of the production function used in the solo model. 2. Describe the growth accounting equation. 2.4 Steady State Growth Path The demand for goods comes from consumption and investment. Equals plus 2.9 This is the national income identity for a closed economy with no government purchases. The goal is to determine the saving rate which is desirable. Substitute for C from equation 2.7 in equation 2.9 equals 1 minus plus 2.10. We get equals 2.11. This equation shows that investment equals saving. Thus the rate of saving S is also the fraction O output devoted to investment. Let us substitute equals in equation 2.11. This gives us 28. Economic growth equals 2.12. Equation 2.12 expresses investment per worker as a function of the capital stock per worker. Figure 2.2 shows for any given capital stock, the production function equals, determines how much output the economy produces, and the saving rate determines the allocation of that output between consumption per worker and investment per worker. 2.4.1 Dynamics of the Model We want to determine the behavior of the economy we have just described. Labor is exogenous and not determined within the model. Thus, to characterize the behavior of the economy, we must analyze the behavior of the other input, capital. K equals, we can use the chain rule to find. Equals, minus, asterisk operator, 2.13. Equals, minus, asterisk operator, 2.14. Substitute for from equation 2.8 and equals from equation 2.6 in equation 2.14. Figure 2.2, output, consumption, and investment. Capital per worker. Output per worker. The saving rate determines the allocation of output between consumption and investment. For any level of capital, output is, investment is, and consumption is, minus. Output. Investment. Consumption per worker. Investment per worker. Output. Per worker. 29. Equals the solo model, minus, asterisk operator, 2.15. Substitute equals equals in equation 2.15 equals minus minus 2.16. Substitute from 2.12 into equation 2.16 equals minus plus 2.17.
Equation 2.17 is the key equation of the Solo model. It states that the rate of change of the capital stock per unit of labor is the difference between two terms. The first is the actual investment per unit of labor, output per unit of labor, and the fraction of that output that is invested is. The second term, plus, is break-even investment, the amount of investment that must be done to keep at its existing level. There are two reasons that some investment is needed to prevent from falling. First, existing capital is depreciating. This capital must be replaced to keep the capital stock from falling. This is the term in equation 2.17. Second, the quantity of labor is growing. Since the quantity of labor is growing at rate N, the capital stock must grow at rate N to hold steady. This is the term in equation 2.17. This is the amount of investment necessary to provide new workers with capital. The equation shows that population growth reduces the accumulation of capital per worker much the way depreciation does. When actual investment per unit of labor exceeds the investment needed to break even, K is rising. When actual investment falls short of the break-even investment, K is falling. And when the two are equal, K is constant. 2.4.2 Steady State Level of Capital A Steady State is a situation in which the economy's output per worker, consumption per worker, and capital stock per worker are constant. To explain how the Solo model works, we first examine the characteristics of a steady state and then discuss how economy might attain it. In figure 2.3, there is a single capital stock asterisk operator at which the amount of investment equals the amount of depreciation and the amount of investment necessary to provide new workers with capital. If the economy finds itself at this level of the capital stock, the capital stock will not change because the two opposing forces acting on it, investment and depreciation and population growth, just balance. That is, at asterisk operator equals zero, so the capital stock per worker and output per worker are steady over time rather than growing or shrinking. We therefore call asterisk operator the steady state level of capital. The definition of an equilibrium is a positive value of denoted by asterisk operator such that equals zero. This is called the steady state. There is a corresponding value of output per worker, denoted by asterisk operator such that equals zero. The steady state value of asterisk operator is solved from equation 2.17. Zero equals asterisk operator minus plus asterisk operator 2.18. 30. Economic growth then asterisk operator is solved from asterisk operator equals asterisk operator. The steady state is significant for two reasons. As we have just seen, an economy at the steady state will stay there. In addition, and just as important, an economy not at the steady state will go there. That is, regardless of the level of capital with which the economy begins, it ends up with the steady state level of capital. In this sense, the steady state represents the long-run equilibrium of the economy. To see why an economy always ends up at the steady state, suppose that the economy starts with less than the steady state level of capital, such as level in figure 2.3. In this case, the level of investment exceeds the break-even investment, depreciation, and population growth. Over time, the capital stock will rise and will continue to rise, along with output, until it approaches the steady state asterisk operator. Similarly, suppose that the economy starts with more than the steady state level of capital, such as level. 
In this case, investment is less than break-even investment. Capital is reducing faster than it is being replaced. The capital stock will fall, again approaching the steady state level. Once the capital stock reaches the steady state, investment equals depreciation and population growth, and there is no pressure for the capital stock to either increase or decrease. Investment Figure 2.3, steady state level in the Salo model. Capital per worker the steady state level of capital asterisk operator is the level at which investment equals break-even investment, plus. Below asterisk operator, i.e., at capital stock increases because investment exceeds depreciation and population growth. At, capital stock shrinks. An economy always ends up at the steady state level, asterisk operator. Actual investment. Asterisk operator steady state. Break even investment plus 31. Figure 2.4 summarizes this information in the form of a phase diagram, which the Salo model shows as a function of. If is initially less than asterisk operator, actual investment exceeds break even investment and so is positive, that is, is rising. If exceeds asterisk operator, is negative, that is, is falling. Finally, if equals asterisk operator, is zero. Thus, regardless of where starts, it converges to asterisk operator. 2.4.3 Balanced Growth Path In the steady state with population growth, capital per worker and output per worker are constant. Because the number of workers is growing at the rate, total output and total capital must also be growing at the rate. Equals, equals. Additionally, in the steady state. Equals zero and equals zero. Differentiating with respect to time. Equals minus 2.19. Equals minus 2.20. Equals minus 2.21. In the steady state equals zero and equals. Putting this in equation 2.21. Equals 2.22. Figure 2.4, phase diagram for in the Salo model. The phase diagram above shows that the steady state, which is unique, is also stable, it will be reached in the long run, i.e., asymptotically. When is less than steady state level asterisk operator, rate of change in capital per worker. Is positive, zero and capital stock per worker increases to reach asterisk operator. Capital per worker, asterisk operator, zero, k. Zero. Zero. 32. Economic growth similarly differentiating with respect to time. Equals minus 2.23. Equals minus 2.24. Equals minus 2.25. In the steady state equals zero and equals. By substituting these values in equation. 2.25, we obtain, equals 2.26. In the steady state output and capital stock grows at the rate of population growth, while output per worker and capital per worker remain constant. Thus the Salo model implies that, regardless of its starting point, the economy converges to a balanced growth path, a situation where each variable of the model grows at the rate exogenously given by the population growth. 2.5 The Golden Rule Level of Capital Accumulation if we were to introduce households into the model, their welfare would depend not on output but on consumption. Investment is simply an input into production in the future. 
Thus, for many purposes, we are likely to be more interested in the behavior of consumption than in the behavior of output. A benevolent policymaker would thus want to choose the steady state with the highest level of consumption. The steady state value of that maximizes consumption is called the golden rule level of capital and is denoted asterisk operator. National Income Accounts Identity equals plus 2.19 Consumption per worker is equals minus 2.20 because steady state output is asterisk operator and steady state investment is plus asterisk operator at the break even investment asterisk operator, we can express the steady state consumption as equals asterisk operator minus plus asterisk operator 2.21. This equation shows that an increase in steady-state capital has two opposing effects on steady-state consumption. On the one hand, more capital means more output. On the other hand, more capital also means that more output must be used to replace capital that is wearing out and equip new workers with high level of capital. Figure 2.5 graphs steady-state output and steady-state break-even investment as a function of the steady-state capital stock. Steady-state consumption is the gap between output and break-even investment. This figure shows that there is one level of the capital stock, the golden rule level asterisk operator that maximizes consumption. If the capital stock is below the golden rule level, an increase in the capital stock raises output more than break-even investment, so consumption rises. In this case, the production function is steeper. 33. Then the plus the solo model asterisk operator line, so the gap between these two curves which equals consumption, grows as asterisk operator rises. By contrast, if the capital stock is above the golden rule level, an increase in the capital stock reduces consumption because the increase in output is smaller than the increase in break-even investment. In this case, the production function is flatter than the plus asterisk operator line, so the gap between the curves, consumption, shrinks as asterisk operator rises. At the golden rule level of capital, the production function and the plus asterisk operator line have the same slope, and consumption is at its greatest level. Panel B shows consumption per worker depends on the capital per worker. An increase in capital per worker till the golden rule level raises consumption per worker. A further increase in capital per worker shrinks consumption per worker. The fundamental reason for this outcome is the diminishing marginal productivity of capital that is, the larger the capital stock already is, the smaller the benefit from expanding the capital stock further. The golden rule level of capital per worker ratio asterisk operator is given by the condition. Asterisk operator equals plus 2.22. Asterisk operator minus equals 2.23. Equation 2.23 implies that marginal productivity of capital, net of depreciation, equals population growth rate at the golden rule level. 34. Economic growth, check your progress too. 1. Explain the dynamics of the solo model. 2. Explain how does an economy always ends up at the steady state. 3. Explain the condition required to attain golden rule level of capital. 2.6 The fundamental determinants of long-run living standards. What, what determines how well off the average person in an economy will be in the long run? We can use the Salo model to answer this question. 
Here, we discuss three factors that affect long-run living standards, the saving rate, population growth, and productivity growth. 2.6.1 The Impact of Growth in the Saving Rate According to the SALO model, a higher saving rate implies higher living standards in the long run, as illustrated in Figure 2.6. Suppose that the initial saving rate is so that saving per worker is. The saving curve when saving curve when the saving rate is is labeled initial saving per worker. The initial steady state capital labor ratio, asterisk operator, is the capital labor ratio at which initial saving curve and the break-even investment line cross, point A. Suppose now that the government introduces policies that strengthen the incentives for saving, causing the country's saving rate to rise from 2. The increased saving rate raises saving at every level of the capital labor ratio. Graphically, the saving curve shifts upwards from 2. The new steady state capital labor. Ratio, asterisk operator, corresponds to the intersection of the new saving curve and the break. Even investment line, point B. Because asterisk operator is larger than asterisk operator, the higher saving rate has increased the steady state capital labor ratio. Gradually, this economy will move to the higher steady state capital labor ratio as indicated by the 35. Arrows on the horizontal axis. In the new steady state, output per worker and the solo model consumption per worker will be higher than in the original steady state. Higher saving rate leads to faster growth in the solo model, but only temporarily. An increase in the rate of saving raises growth only until the economy reaches the new steady state. If the economy maintains a high saving rate, it will maintain a large capital stock and a high level of output, but it will not maintain a high growth rate forever. A higher saving rate is said to have a level effect because only the level of output per person and not its growth rate is influenced by the saving rate in the steady state. 2.6.2 The Impact of Growth in the Population Rate what is the relationship between population growth and a country's level of development as measured by output, consumption, and capital per worker? The SALA model's answer to this question is shown in Figure 2.7. An initial steady-state capital labor ratio, asterisk operator corresponds to the intersection of the break-even investment line and the saving curve at point A. Now suppose that the rate of population growth, which is same as the rate of labor force growth, increases from an initial level to. What will happen to living standards? An increase in population growth rate means that workers are entering the labor force more rapidly than before. These new workers must be equipped with capital. Thus, to maintain the same steady state capital labor ratio, the amount. 36. Economic growth of investment per current member of workers must rise. Algebraically, the rise in increases investment per worker from plus to plus. This increase in the population growth rate causes the break-even investment line to pivot up and to the left, i.e., be steeper, as its slope rises from plus to plus. After the pivot of the break-even investment line, the new the steady state is at point B. The new steady state capital labor ratio is asterisk operator, which is lower than the original capital labor ratio, asterisk operator. Because the new steady state capital labor ratio is lower, the new steady state output per worker and consumption per worker will be lower as well. Thus, the SALA model implies that increased population growth will lower living standards. The basic problem is that when the workforce is growing rapidly, a large part of current output must be diverted just to providing capital for the new workers to use. 
This result suggests that policies to control population growth will indeed improve living standards. Notice that a change in the population growth rate, like a change in the saving rate, has a level effect on output per person, but does not affect the steady-state growth rate of output per person. 37. 2.7 Technological Progress in Solo the Solo Model Model In the model so far, when the economy reaches its steady state, output per worker stops growing. To explain persistent growth, we need to introduce technological progress into the model. The model can be modified to include exogenous technological progress, which over time expands society's production capabilities. We now write the production function as equals times 2.24, where e is a new and somewhat abstract variable called the efficiency of labor. The term times can be interpreted as measuring the effective number of workers. It takes into account the number of actual workers L and the efficiency of each worker E. This new production function states that total output Y depends on the inputs of capital K and effective workers times. We assume that technological progress causes the efficiency of labor to grow at some constant rate, which is exogenously given equals 2.25. This form of te technological progress is called labor augmenting and is called the rate of labor augmenting technological progress. Because the labor force L is growing at rate N and the efficiency of each unit of labor E is growing at rate, the effective number of workers times is growing at rate plus. We now analyze the economy in terms of quantities per effective worker. We now let equals times stand for capital per effective worker and equals times stand for output per effective worker. With these definitions, we can again write equals k equals times. We can use the chain rule to find equals minus Asterisk operator, minus, asterisk operator, 2.26. Equals, minus, asterisk operator, minus, asterisk operator, 2.27. Let us substitute for, from equation 2.8 and, equals from equation 2.6 and. Equals from equation 2.25, in equation 2.27. This gives us equals minus asterisk operator minus asterisk operator 2.28. Substitute times equals and times equals in equation 2.28. Equals minus 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 2.29. By substituting equals into equation 2.29, we obtain equals minus plus plus 2.30. 38. Economic growth equation 2.30 shows the evolution of capital per unit of effective worker K. The change in capital stock equals investment minus the break-even investment plus plus. Break-even investment includes three terms. To keep constant is needed to replace depreciating capital, is needed to provide capital for new workers, and is needed to provide capital for the new effective workers created by technological progress. The steady state value of asterisk operator is solved from equation 2.30 by putting equals zero. We drop the time subscripts, T as output per effective worker and capital per unit of effective labor are constant in the steady state. Thus, we obtain zero equals asterisk operator minus plus plus asterisk operator 2.31. Then asterisk operator is solved from 
Asterisk operator equals asterisk operator. In the steady state, capital per unit of effective labor asterisk operator is given by Asterisk operator equals plus plus asterisk operator 2.32. As before, in the steady state, investment equals the break-even investment. As shown in figure 2.8, there is one level of K denoted by asterisk operator at which capital per effective worker and output per effective worker are constant. As before, this steady state represents the long-run equilibrium of the economy. Figure 2.8, Technological Progress and the Solo Model Capital per Effective Worker Investment, Break-Even Investment The break-even investment now equals plus plus. In the steady state investment, exactly offsets the reductions in attributable to depreciation, population growth, and technological progress. Actual investment. Asterisk operator. Steady state. Break-even investment, plus plus. 39. 2.7.1 balanced growth path the solo model. By assumption, we have equals times equals times. Additionally, in the steady state, equals zero and equals zero. Differentiating with respect to time, we obtain equals times minus times minus times 2.33 equals times minus minus 2.34 equals minus minus 2.35 in the steady state equals zero and equals equals by substituting this in equation 2.35 we obtain equals plus 2.36 similarly by differentiating with respect to time we obtain equals times minus times minus times 2.37 equals minus minus 2.38 equals minus minus 2.39 in the steady state equals zero and equals equals putting this in equation 2.39 equals plus 2.40 from equations 2.36 and 2.40, we now know that in the steady state, the growth rates of the aggregate capital stock and aggregate output are each in equality with the sum of the technology growth rate and population growth rates. Equals equals plus. Alternatively, minus equals and minus equals 2.41. The growth rates of the capital stock per labor and of output per labor are each equal to the technology growth rate. The economy in the long run converges to the balanced growth path. On the balanced growth path, the growth rate of output per worker is solely determined by the growth rate of technological progress. With the addition of technological progress, our model can finally explain the sustained increases in standards of living that we observe. That is, we have 40. Economic growth shown that technological progress can lead to sustained growth in output per worker. By contrast, a high rate of saving leads to a high rate of growth only until the steady state is reached. Once the economy is in steady state, the rate of growth of output per worker depends only on the rate of technological progress. According to the Sala model, only technological progress can explain sustained growth and persistently rising living standards. 2.7.2 The Golden Rule Level of Capital 
The golden rule level of capital is now defined as the steady state that maximizes consumption per effective worker. Following the same arguments that we have used before, we can show that steady state consumption per effective worker is equals asterisk operator minus plus plus asterisk operator 2.42. Steady state consumption is maximized if asterisk operator equals plus plus 2.43. Asterisk operator minus equals plus 2.44. Equation 2.44 implies that at the golden rule level of capital, the net marginal product of capital minus equals the rate of growth of total output plus. Table 2.1 The fundamental determinants of long-run living standards. An increase in causes long-run output, capital, and consumption per worker to reason. The saving rate, S rise higher saving allows for more investment and a larger capital stock. The rate of population growth, fall with higher population growth, more output must be used to equip new workers with capital, leaving less output available for consumption or to increase capital per worker. The rate of technological progress, rise higher productivity directly increases output. It also raises savings and the capital stock. 41. Check your pro progress 3 the solo model 1 why an increase in saving rate has only level effect on output per worker. 2. Explain how an increase in population growth from to affect the long run level of capital and output per worker. 3. Explain how an increase in the rate of technological progress results in a sustained increase in the standards of living. 2.8 Let U.S. sum up. The solo model of economic growth is a unique and splendid contribution to economic growth theory. It establishes the stability of the steady-state growth through a very simple and elementary adjustment mechanism. In this unit, we have learned that in the solo growth model saving, population growth and technological progress interact in determining the level and growth of a country's standard of living. In the steady state of the solo growth model, the growth rate of output per person is equal to the growth rate of capital per worker. Both these growth rates are solely determined by the exogenous rate of technological progress. The golden rule, consumption maximizing, steady state is characterized by equality between the net marginal product of capital, minus, and the steady state growth rate of total income, plus. There are two determinants of long-run growth in the solo model, an increase in the saving rate, and a fall in the population growth rate. An economy's rate of saving determines the size of its capital stock and thus its level of production. The higher the rate of saving, the higher the stock of capital and the higher the level of output. An economy's rate of population growth is another long-run determinant of the standard of living. According to the Sala model, the higher the rate of population growth, the lower the steady-state levels of capital per worker and 42. Economic growth output per worker. However, both the changes in saving rate and population rate have level effect output per person but do not affect the steady state growth rate of output per person. It is only the technological progress which can lead to sustained growth in output per worker. 2.9 Answers slash Hints to Check Your Progress Exercises Check Your Progress 1 1. The production function has a positive slope but it becomes flatter as the amount of capital increases, indicating that it exhibits diminishing returns. 2. The relationship between the rate of output growth and the rates of input growth and productivity growth is called the growth accounting equation. Check your progress 2. 
1 equals minus plus the above equation is the key equation of the solo model. It states that the rate of change of the capital stock per unit of labor is the difference between two terms. The first is the actual investment per unit of labor and the second term, plus, is break-even investment. 2. Refer to figure 2.3. Suppose that the economy starts with less than the steady state level of capital, such as level. In this case, the level of investment exceeds the break-even investment, depreciation and population growth. Over time, the capital stock will rise and will continue to rise, along with output, until it approaches the steady state asterisk operator. 3. The golden rule level of capital per worker ratio asterisk operator is given by the condition asterisk operator equals plus. Check your progress 3. 1. A higher saving rate is said to have a level effect because only the level of output per person and not its growth rate is influenced by the saving rate in the steady state. 2. According to the Sala model, the higher the rate of population growth, the lower the steady state levels of capital per worker and output per worker. Refer to figure 2.7. 3. The economy in the long run converges to the balanced growth path. On the balanced growth path, the growth rate of output per worker is solely determined by the growth rate of technological progress. Unit 3 Endogenous Growth Models Structure 3.0 Objectives 3.1 Introduction 3.2 Assumptions of the Endogenous Growth Models 3.3 The AK Model 3.4 The Romer Model 3.5 Steady State Growth in the Romer Model 3.6 Deriving the Steady State Growth Rate in the Romer Model 3.7 Steady State Level of Output Technology Ratio 3.8 Permanent Increase in the Share of R&D 3.9 Let us sum up 3.10 answers slash hints to check your progress exercises. 3.0 Objectives After reading this unit, you will be able to explain how increasing returns to scale leads to expansion of output and economic growth, identify the reasons behind economic growth of advanced economies in the long run, outline the assumptions of the endogenous growth models, explain the important features of the AK model, determine how saving and investment can lead to persistent growth in the AK model, explain the aggregate production function in the Romer model. Derive the steady-state growth rate of output, capital, and technology. Calculate the steady-state levels of the key variables such as output technology ratio and capital technology ratio on the balanced growth path. And examine the impact of a permanent increase in the R&D share in total inputs. 3.1 Introduction the Solo Model of Economic Growth, see Unit 2, has proved to be quite useful in our understanding of economic growth. An implication of the Solo Model is that there should be convergence in growth across countries in the long run. When capital per labor is low, the returns to capital are very high as a result of which growth rate of the economy is high. When capital per labor increases, Dr. Archibadia, Associate Professor, Department of Economics and Public Policy, Central University of Himachal Pradesh, Dharamshala. 44. Economic growth there is diminishing returns to capital and growth rate slows down. Thus growth rate of poor countries, low capital per labor, should be higher while that of rich countries, high capital per labor, should be lower. In the process, there would be convergence in growth rates across countries. Empirically, however, it is observed that rich countries grow richer and poor countries become poorer over time. Even in India, we observe that advanced states have grown faster than backward states over time indicating divergence in economic growth. This type of growth scenario is contrary to the conclusions of the Solo model. 
Another limitation of the Solo model, a theoretical one, is its assumption regarding technological progress. According to the Solo model, productivity growth or technological progress is the only source of long-run growth of output per capita. Thus an explanation of long-run economic growth should include an explanation of productivity growth. The model, however, simply takes the rate of productivity growth as given, exogenous, or determined outside the model, instead of explaining how productivity growth is determined. In other words, in the Solo model the determinant of long-run growth rate of output per capita is technological progress, which is exogenous to the model. The Solo model also implied that an increase in rate of savings only has a short-run impact on rate of growth and is neutral in its effect on the long-run rate of growth. Hence, treating technological change as exogenous, neoclassical theory could not focus on the fundamental forces which determine long-run growth of nations. Endogenous growth theory overcomes these limitations of the Solo model. In this unit, we discuss two models, viz. the AK model and the Romer model. We seek an understanding of why the advanced economies of the world, such as the USA, have grown at around 2% per year for the past century. From where does the technological progress that underlines such growth come? Instead of assuming that growth occurs because of unpredictable and exogenous improvements in technology, the endogenous growth theory focuses on understanding the forces underlying technological progress. Hence, main concern of the endogenous growth models is to explain the differences in growth rates among countries and the contributions of different factors to economic growth in these countries. These models go more deeply into the ultimate sources of growth by treating the rate of technological progress or the rate of population growth, or both, as endogenous factors. 3.2 Overview of Endogenous Growth Models the endogenous growth theory came into being as a response to the limitations of the Solo model. It tried to explain productivity growth, and hence the growth rate of output, endogenously or within the model. The endogenous growth models reject the Solo model's assumption of exogenous technological progress. 45. Endogenous growth models recall that the neoclassical growth models assumed diminishing returns to inputs so that expansion of output and economic growth cannot take place beyond a level. In order to overcome this restriction to economic growth, endogenous growth models assume that increasing returns to scale is possible. There are quite a few endogenous growth models in economic literature. We begin by stating the general assumptions of such models model. Subsequently, we come to the specifics. The simplest endogenous model is the AK model. We then introduce the aggregate production function in the Romer model. The conditions for balanced growth and steady state levels of key variables, viz. I, output technology ratio, and 2, capital technology ratio are developed subsequently. We also discuss how the changes in technological progress affect the levels of output per person and capital per person in the steady state. We conclude by discussing implications of the endogenous growth models for the economies of the world. The main assumptions of endogenous growth models are as follows. A. There are many firms in a market. B. Knowledge or technological advance is a non-rival good.
are increasing returns to scale to all factors taken together and constant returns to a single factor, at least for one of the factors. D. Technological advance comes from things people do. It means that technological advance is based on the creation of new ideas. E. Many individuals and firms have market power and earn profits from their discoveries. This assumption arises from the fact that there could be increasing returns to scale in production. Increasing returns to scale leads to imperfect competition in the market. 3.3 The AK Model As point pointed out above, the AK Model is the simplest endogenous model. It assumes a constant, exogenous, saving rate. It models technological progress with a single parameter, usually denoted by A. It rejects the assumption that the production function exhibit diminishing returns to scale. Our simple endogenous growth model is based on the aggregate production function. Equals 3.1 Where one Y is aggregate output, K is aggregate capital stock, and A is a positive constant measuring the amount of output produced for each unit of K. Thus in 3.1, we assume that Y is a constant proportion of K. According to the production function in equation 3.1, each additional unit of capital increases output by units, regardless of how many units of capital are used in production. Because the marginal product of capital, equal to A, does not depend on the size of the capital stock K, the production function in equation 3.1 does not imply diminishing marginal productivity of capital. The 46. Economic growth assumption that the marginal productivity is constant, rather than diminishing, is a key departure from the solo model. Endogenous growth theorists have provided a number of reasons to explain why, for the economy as a whole, the marginal productivity of capital may not be diminishing. One explanation emphasizes the role of human capital. In economics, the term human capital means knowledge, skills, and training of individuals. As economies accumulate capital and become richer, they devote more resources towards investment in people through improved nutrition, schooling, health care, and on-the-job training. This investment in people increases the country's human capital, which in turn raises productivity. If the physical capital stock increases while the stock of human capital stock remains fixed, there will be diminishing marginal productivity of physical capital, as each unit of physical capital effectively works with a smaller amount of human capital. Endogenous growth theory argues that, as an economy's physical capital stock, increases, its human capital stock tends to increase in the same proportion. Thus, when the physical capital stock increases, each unit of physical capital effectively works with the same amount of human capital, so the marginal productivity of capital need not decrease. A second rationale for constant marginal productivity of capital is based on the observation that, in a growing economy, firms have incentives to undertake research and development R&D, activities. This R&D increases the technical know-how and results in productivity gains. Such gains offset any tendency for the marginal productivity of capital to decline. In the above, we examined why a production function like equation 3.1 might be a reasonable description of the economy as a whole. We took into account factors such as increased human capital and R&D. Let us now find out the implications of equation 3.1. As in the Solo model, let us assume that national saving, S, is a constant fraction, S, of aggregate output, AK, since Y equals AK. Thus, equals equals. 
As you from introductory macroeconomics, investment must equal saving in a closed economy. Recall that gross investment equals net investment, the net increase in the capital stock, plus depreciation, decay, that is, equals increment plus 3.2. Therefore, setting investment equal to saving, we have increment plus equals 3.3. The growth rate of capital stock thus is increment equals minus 3.4. Because output is proportional to the capital stock, see equation 3.1, the growth rate of output increment equals the growth rate of the capital stock increment. Therefore equation 3.4 implies that. 47. Endogenous growth models increment equals minus 3.5. From equation 3.5, we can find out the factors determine the growth rate of output increment. Notice that, as long as, the economy's income grows forever, even without the assumption of exogenous technological progress. The growth rate of output in equation 3.5 depends on the saving rate S. This is in sharp contrast to the solo model. Recall that in solo model the saving rate does not affect the long-run growth rate of the economy. In the AK model, however, the saving rate affects long-run growth of the economy. This result is more realistic because higher rates of saving and capital formation encourages human capital formation and provides incentives for R&D. The resulting increases in productivity help to spur long-run growth. In summary, in comparison to the solo model, places greater emphasis on the saving, human capital formation and R&D as sources of long-run growth. Thus a simple change in the production function can alter dramatically the predictions about economic growth. In the solo model, saving leads to growth temporarily, but diminishing returns to capital eventually force the economy to approach a steady state in which growth depends only on exogenous technological progress. By contrast, in this endogenous growth model, saving and investment can lead to persistent growth. Although Although endogenous growth theory remains in a developmental stage, the approach appears promising in at least two dimensions. First, this theory attempts to explain, rather than assumes, the economy's rate of productivity growth. Second, it shows how the long-run growth rate of output may depend on factors, such as the country's saving rate that can be affected by government policies. Check your progress one. 1. State the unique assumption of the AK model. 2. What determines the growth rate of output in the AK model? 48. Economic growth 3.4 for the Romer growth model. Romer's model of endogenous technological change of 1990 identifies a research sector specializing in the production of ideas. This sector invokes human capital along with the existing stock of knowledge to produce ideas or new knowledge. To Romer, ideas are more important than natural resources. He cites the example of Japan which has very few natural resources but it was open to new Western ideas and technology. Romer describes the aggregate production function as Equals is proportional to, is proportional to, plus is proportional to, plus midline horizontal ellipsis. Plus is proportional to, 3.6. Equals is proportional to, sigma is proportional to, 3.7. Where is the number of workers producing output and the, are different types of capital goods? A large number of perfectly competitive firms combine labor and capital to produce a homogeneous output good. Y output Y is produced using labor and a number of different capital goods, which we call intermediate goods. 
At any point in time, a measure is the number of capital goods that are available to be used in the final goods sector. Inventions or ideas in the model correspond to the creation of new capital goods that can be used by the final goods sector to produce output. If A was fixed, the pattern of diminishing returns to each of the separate capital goods would mean that growth would eventually taper off to zero. However, in the Romer model, A is not fixed. Instead, there are workers engaged in R&D and this leads to invention of new capital goods. When we recognize that ideas, A, are also an input into the production function, then there are increasing returns. We can define the aggregate capital stock as equals sigma 3.8. Again, we will treat the savings rate as exogenous and assume equals minus 3.9. Capital accumulates as people in the economy forego consumption at some given rate and depreciates at the exogenous rate, d. One observation that simplifies the analysis is the fact that all of the capital goods play an identical role in the production process. For this reason, we can assume that the demand from producers for each of these capital goods is the same, implying that equals equals 3.10 this means that the production function can be written as equals is proportional to is proportional to 3.11. Note now that equals from equation 3.8 and equation 3.10 equals 3.12. 49. Endogenous growth models so output can be expressed as equals is proportional to is proportional to equals is proportional to is proportional to 3.13. The aggregate production function in the Romer model describes how the capital stock and labor combine to produce output using the stock of ideas is a parameter between 0 and 1. For a given level of technology, the production function in equation 3.13 exhibits constant returns to scale in n. However, when we recognize that ideas, A, are also an input into the production function, then there are increasing returns. The total labor supply in the economy is used in two activities. Workers are used to produce output and workers are engaged in R&D and this leads to the invention of new capital goods. Plus equals 3.14. We assume a constant fraction of labor force is engaged in R&D to produce new ideas equals 3.15. The remaining fraction of workers is used to produce output equals minus equals 3.16. Labor which is equivalent to the population grows exponentially at some constant and exogenous rate equals 3.17. Is the stock of knowledge or the number of ideas that have been invented over the course of history until time t is the number of new ideas produced at any given point in time? is described using a production function for the change in the number of capital goods, ideas. Equals 3.18 Depends positively on the number of researchers attempting to discover new ideas. Lambda is an index of how slowly diminishing marginal productivity sets in for researchers. For example, duplication of effort is more likely when there are more persons engaged in research. Lambda is some parameter between 0 and 1. Is the rate at which they discover new ideas. 
This rate of discovery would depend on the stock of ideas that have already been invented. Equals 3.19. If theta is zero, this rate of discovery would be an increasing function of A that is the invention of ideas in the past raises the productivity of researchers in the present. If zero, this rate of discovery would be a decreasing function of A and corresponds to the fishing out case in which the fish become harder to catch over time. Finally, equals zero implies that the productivity of research is independent of the stock of knowledge. 50. Economic growth rewrite the general production function for ideas from equations 3.18 and 3.19 equals 3.20, we assume that it won. This effect stems from the giant shoulders effect. For instance, invention of new software must have relied upon previous invention of relevant computer hardware. We also assume it may first reflect an externality associated with duplication. Some of the ideas created by an individual researcher may not be new to the economy. Check your progress to 1. Explain the aggregate production function of the Romer model. 2. Explain what do represent in the production function of ideas. 3. Explain the condition required to attain golden rule level of capital. 3.5 The steady state growth in the Romer model. This economy converges to a steady state growth path in which capital and output grow at the same rate. So, we can derive the steady state growth rate as follows. Rewrite the production function after substituting for from equation 3.16 as equals 3.21. 51. Endogenous growth models taking logs and derivatives of both sides of equation 3.21 equals minus plus 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 3.22. Now we use the fact that the steady state growth rates of capital and output are the same to derive that this steady state growth rate is given by asterisk operator equals minus plus 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 3.23 now equals 3.24 that is the share of labor allocated to the non-research sector cannot be changing along the steady state path otherwise the fraction of researchers would eventually go to zero or become greater than one which would be infeasible so we have minus asterisk operator equals 3.25 the steady state growth rate of output per worker equals the steady state growth rate of a let lowercase letters denote per capita variables and let denote the growth rate of variable x. Then, equals equals 3.26. That is, per capita output, capital labor ratio and stock of ideas must all grow at the same rate along a balanced growth path. If there is no technological progress in the model, then there is no growth. Therefore, we must work out this rate of technological growth along a balanced growth path. 3.6 Deriving the steady state growth rate in the Romer model The big difference relative to the Solo model is that the A term is determined within the model as opposed to evolving at some fixed rate unrelated to the actions of the agents in the model economy. To derive the steady state growth rate in this model, note that the growth rate of the number of capital goods is equals 3.27. The steady state of this economy implies that the parameter is a growing at a constant rate. This can only be the case if the growth rate of the right-hand side of equation 3.27 is zero. Taking log and derivatives of both sides of equation 3.27, we get 0 equals plus minus minus 3.28. Again in the steady state, the growth rate of the fraction of researchers must be 0. 
So along the model's steady-state growth path, the growth rate of the number of capital goods is asterisk operator equals 3.29 52 economic growth substituting for equals from equation 3.17 we get equals 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 asterisk operator equals 3.30 the long-run growth rate of output per worker in this model depends positively on three factors. A. The parameter, which describes the extent to which diminishing marginal productivity sets in as we add researchers. We may refer to the externality associated with lambda as stepping on toes effect. B. The strength of the standing on shoulders effect. The more past inventions help to boost the rate of current inventions, the faster the growth rate will be. It reflects a positive knowledge spillover in research. We may refer to the externality associated with as standing on shoulders effect. C. The growth rate of the number of workers. The higher is, the faster the economy adds researchers. This may seem like a somewhat unusual assumption, but it holds well if one takes a very long view of world economic history. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, growth rates of population and GDP per capita were very low. The past 200 years have seen both population growth and economic growth rates increases. 3.7 The Steady State Level of Output Technology Ratio just as with our discussion of the SALO model, we can decompose output per worker into a capital output ratio component and a total factor productivity component. In other words, one can rearrange equation 3.13 by substituting equals minus equals minus 3.31. From equation 3.9 equals minus equals minus 3.32. We find that equation 3.32 is the capital accumulation equation. Let us divide both sides of equation 3.31 by L so that we get output per capita. Equals equals minus 3.33. Let us substitute equals in equation 3.33 equals minus 3.34. Let us divide both sides of equation 3.34 by A. This gives us equals minus 3.35. 53. Endogenous growth models, if we substitute equals and equals in equation 3.35, we get equals minus 3.36, where equals equals is output per worker to technology or output technology ratio. And equals equals is capital per worker to technology or capital technology ratio. If we rewrite the capital accumulation equation 3.32 in terms of, we obtain the capital technology ratio equals minus minus 3.37. Let us substitute for equals minus, equals, and equals in equation 3.37. This gives us equals minus 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 3.38 equals minus 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 3.39 equals minus 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 3.40 equals minus plus plus 3.41. Solving for steady state output technology ratio is determined by the production function and the condition that in the steady state equals zero. We solve for asterisk operator by putting equals zero in equation 3.41 equals minus plus plus 3.42 
0 equals minus minus plus plus 3.43 equals minus 3.44 asterisk operator equals minus 3.45 Substituting asterisk from equation 3.45 into the production function in equation 3.36, we get asterisk operator equals minus minus 3.46. Hence, steady state output technology ratio is given by asterisk operator equals minus 3.47. 54. Economic growth 3.8 permanent increase in the share of R&D. In this section we try to answer what happens to the advanced economies of the world if the share of population searching for new ideas increases permanently. To simplify things slightly, let's assume that equals 1 equals 0. We can rewrite equation 3.27 as equals 3.48. Figure 3.1 shows what happens to technological progress when it increases permanently to assuming that economy begins in a steady state. In steady state, the economy grows along a balanced growth path at the rate of technological progress, which happens to equal the rate of population growth. Under our simplifying assumptions, equals equals 3.49 equals equals 3.50 in steady state the economy grows along a balanced growth path at equals with an increase in equals zero the number of researchers increases and the ratio of jumps to a higher level x at x technological progress exceeds Population growth, so the ratio declines over time, as indicated by the arrows. Equals. X equals. Figure 3.1, technological progress, an increase in the R&D share. 55. Endogenous growth models from equation 3.50, the ratio of is therefore equal to. In figure 3.1, suppose the increase in occurs at time equals zero. With a population of, the number of researchers increases as increases, so that the ratio jumps to a higher level. The additional researchers produce an increased number of new ideas, so the growth rate of technology is also higher at this point. This situation corresponds to the point labeled X in figure 3.1. At X, technological progress exceeds population growth, so the ratio declines over time, as indicated by the arrows. As this ratio declines, the rate of technological change gradually falls also until the economy returns to the balanced growth path where equals. Therefore, a permanent increase in the share of the population devoted to research raises the rate of technological progress temporarily, but not in the long run. This behavior is depicted in Figure 3.2. What happens to the level of technology in this economy? Figure 3.3 answers this question. The level of technology is growing along a balanced growth path at rate until time equals zero. At this time, the growth rate increases and the level of technology rises faster than before. Over time, however, the growth rate falls until it returns to the level of technology is permanently higher as a result of the permanent increase in R&D. Thus a permanent increase in the share of. Figure 3.2, growth rate of technology over time. Equals zero. Equals. The ratio of continues to decline until the economy returns to the balanced growth path where equals. 
Rate of technological progress raises only temporarily. Tim. 56. Economic growth population devoted to research has only a level effect on technology. The level of technology is permanently higher as a result of the permanent increase in R&D. The long-run growth rate of the model returns to the balanced growth path after increasing temporarily. Check your progress 3.1. What is the steady-state growth rate of output per worker in the Romer model? 2. Describe the determinants of the long-run growth rate of output per worker. Figure 3.3, the level of technology over time log A. The level of technology is growing along a balanced growth path at rate until time equals zero. At this time, the growth rate increases and the level of technology rises faster than before. Over time, however, the growth rate falls until it returns to. The level of technology is permanently higher as a result of the permanent increase in R&D. Equals zero. Level effect. Tim. 57. Endogenous growth models 3 derive the equation for the level of steady state output technology ratio. 4. Explain the effect of a permanent increase in the share of population engaged in R&D on the growth rate of technology and the level of technology. 3.9. Let U.S. sum up. Endogenous growth models are an important theoretical framework for understanding the growth process. They highlight inter relationships within the society that helps policymakers. These theories are important because they emphasize that capital accumulation and innovations can induce economic growth, while diminishing returns can reduce it. These models show how long-run economic growth can be achieved through spillovers and scale effects of ideas and research within the economy. The models of endogenous growth are primarily concerned with establishing how technological progress can bring about increasing returns to scale. The AK model by Arrow, 1962, emphasizes the possibility of productivity depending on output per worker. This implies that technological progress can occur, though unintended, by learning by doing. As workers continue to specialize in the production process, the productivity of their input will become higher through this specialization. Technological progress in The AK model is modeled as the difference in the initial productivity of the factor before learning by doing and the productivity of the factor after learning by doing, which will be higher. In the AK model, economic growth is induced by savings, capital accumulation, and efficiency. Efficiency is defined as the increase in the productivity of factor inputs by learning by doing. The Romer model focuses on the distinction between ideas and objects. The assumptions of the model yields four equations. 1. Producing output requires knowledge and labor. The production function has constant returns to scale in objects alone, but increasing returns to scale in objects and ideas. 2. New ideas depend on the existence of ideas in the previous period, the number of workers producing ideas, and their productivity. 3. The number of workers producing ideas and the number of workers producing output sums to the population. 4. Some fraction of the population produces ideas. With these equations, Romer model produces the desired long-run economic growth that Salo did not. The Romer model does not have diminishing returns to ideas because they are non-rival. 58. Economic growth The Romer model has a balanced growth path on which the growth rates of all. Endogenous variables are constant and is equal to g equals g equals g equals asterisk operator equals lambda n. 
The long-run growth rate of output per worker in this model depends positively on three factors. The parameter lambda, the strength of the standing on shoulders effect, and the growth rate of the number of workers. Increase in the level of technology as a result of the permanent increase in R&D has only a level effect on technology. The long-run growth rate of the model returns to the balanced growth path after increasing temporarily. 3.10 Answers slash Hints to Check Your Progress Exercises Check Your Progress 1 1. It uses the assumption that the production function does not exhibit diminishing returns to scale to lead to endogenous growth. 2. The growth rate of output in equation 3.5 depends on the saving rate. Check your progress 2. 1. Output Y is produced using labor and a number of different capital goods, which we call intermediate goods. 2. Lambda is an index of how slowly diminishing marginal productivity sets in for researchers. Represents a positive externality associated with the giant shoulder effect. Check your progress 3. 1. The steady-state growth rate of output per worker equals the steady-state growth rate of A. That is equals equals 2. The long-run growth rate of output per worker in this model depends positively on three factors. The parameter, the strength of the standing on shoulders effect, and the growth rate of the number of workers. 3. Refer to equations 3.31 to 3.47 in the text. 4. A permanent increase in the share of population devoted to research has only a level effect on technology. The level of technology is permanently higher as a result of the permanent increase in R&D. The long-run growth rate of the model returns to the balanced growth path after increasing temporarily. Unit 4 Business Cycle Structure 4.0 Objectives 4.1 Introduction 4.2 Features of Business Cycles 4.3 Phases of Business Cycles 4.3.1 Expansion 4.3.2 Contraction 4.4 Identification of Business Cycles 4.5 Business Cycle Indicators 4.5.1 Leading Indicators 4.5.2 Lagging Indicators 4.5.3 Coincident Indicators 4.6 Theories of Business Cycles 4.6.1 Keynesian Theory of Business Cycle 4.6.2 Schumpeter's Innovation Theory of Business Cycle 4.6.3 Samuelson's Model of Business Cycle Interaction between Multiplier and Accelerator 4.6.4 Real Business Cycle Theory 4.7 Let us sum up 4.8 Answers to Check Your Progress Exercises 4.0 Objectives After going through the unit you will be able to Explain the concept and features of business cycle Identify the various phases of business cycle Ascertain the theoretical framework which explains the occurrence of business cycle Distinguish between the monetary and real factors behind business cycle and Distinguish between the leading, lagging, and coincident indicators. 4.1 Introduction Rapid economic growth witnessed by many developed economies during the past two centuries has not been a smooth one. There have been periodical ups and downs in the GDP levels of these countries. Along with output, there have been fluctuations in various economic aggregates such as income, employment, and prices and their long-term trends. These economies have experienced phases of Dr. Arki Bhatia, Associate Professor, Department of Economics and Public Policy, Central University of Himachal Pradesh, Dharamshala. 60. Economic Growth Expansion and Contraction 